Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your next fighter of the night into the cage, making the walk to the red corner, Mick the Heights and Hammer Stanton! We're going to get straight back to the action here at Cage Warriors 105. And when you talk about action, you've got to talk about the Iron Hammer, Mick Stanton, a man who always brings it in the Cage Warriors game. Yeah, he certainly does. He's never really in a dull fight. So, look, Mick Stanton, we used to always talk about the power in his hands. I've got to say, last time out, Cage Warriors 101, that decision win over Janai e. Banks. It was his ground game and his wrestling. I, you know, I didn't see that coming. He, he really put the time in. He improved it, and it showed. You know, just that, that, that. It was so tangible that he made those vast improvements, and that just makes him so much more dangerous. You know, he's fighting out of Team Hammer in St. Helens, and that's a gym that I've followed for many, many years. They started off as a, a small amateur gym, and now they've got a great set of pros, a great set of amateurs. And they really are making dents in the scene, and Mick Stanton's been a part of that for a long, long time. Yeah, he certainly has. You know, he's had a, a bit of a mixed record uh, on Cage Warriors. Two wins, two losses. Of course, that late notice middleweight title shot as well. Look, he's game for a fight. He's got power in his hands, and his ground game's ever improving. This is going to be a great match. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome his opponents making the walk to the red corner Alex Min Montanani and making his return to Cage Warriors Alex Me Montagnani sometimes he goes by me and sometimes he goes by the albatross let's hope he's not got an albatross round his neck tonight as he looks to pick up his first Cage Warriors win against Mick Stanton yeah, I mean, like, when you say it like that, it sounds a bit funny, doesn't it? Like, you know, he's had one uh, appearance on Cage Rose before versus Craig White, Cage Rose 92, got triangle, that was a loss. But aside from that, 11 wins, 10 of which are finishes, whether it's ground and pound or standing, he's won four of his last five as well. I mean, you know, this guy can really, really hurt you when he puts limbs, uh, limbs on you. So, very much looking forward to some exciting striking exchanges here. I guess if there has to be any criticism of Alex, it's that perhaps relative to mixed recent opponents, he's not maybe had the highest level of opponents outside of the likes of, of Craig White and a couple of others. So perhaps that could be the factor here in terms of the old iron sharpening, iron cliche. However, Alex Bontignani looking incredibly fired up in his corner over there. Yeah, he saw him lose to Craig White, as you say, Josh, in that previous Cage Warriors outing but look at the physical advantages this man has he's incredibly tall six foot four at middleweight against just five eleven for mick stanton surely that's going to be a key back there yeah it's certainly good you're going to see stanton lower his level a little bit you're going to see him come in and have to work his way inside the pocket he's not going to want to strike from range not only has he got a punch up he's going to be right on the end of the longer limbs of montagnani so look for uh, mick stanton to get inside well, let's take a look at the Isha Sport tail of the tape for this middleweight contest. 32 years old is Mick Stanton, 30 is Alex Montagnani. We already talked about that height difference. Six foot four for the Londoner against 5'11 for the man from Liverpool. 11, three and one is the record for Montagnani. Four and three is a professional, is Mick Stanton, and it's Alex Montagnani who is the bookmaker's favorite. We'll throw this one to our MC in the cage, Mr. Hal Chaplin, to get things underway. Introducing first, fighting at the blue corner. He stands five feet 11 inches tall. Official weight, 185.4 pounds. He is fighting out of Liverpool in England and boasts a professional mixed martial arts record of four wins and three defeats. Introducing to you, Mick the Hyton. His opponent standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. He stands 64 inches tall. Official weight 183 pounds even. He is fighting out of Streatham in England and boasts a professional mixed martial arts record of 11 wins, three defeats, and one draw. Introducing to you. Alex, 
Your referee in charge when the action begins, Mr. Rich Mitchell. One of the best in the game, referee Rich Mitchell, about to get this one underway. Three five-minute rounds if they need them in the Cage Warriors middleweight division. Ready, ready. Alex Montagnani in the red, Mick Stanton in the black. So yeah, well, I was going to say how long it takes someone to go to work here, but Montagnani firing the jab, good couple of kicks, really getting that range to work. And Stanton in on the single from a long way out. He's got the entry though. Yeah, Stanton got stung by that jab there and instantly went for the level change. Fantastic work from Mick Stanton. You don't usually see people successful from that far out. And that is an illegal downward elbow to the back of the head from Montagne. Referee Rich Mitchell calling time out there. Doctor! And I'm sure there was no malice in that, but perhaps a little bit of foolishness on Montagnani's part. I think you just plain forgot. I mean, let's take a look here. So, you know, you've got one is the 12 to 6 downward. Was there a little bit of a curve on it? The other is very clearly the target area is presented to him as the back of the head. We're probably going to see a point deduction here. I would imagine so. Hard shot stock. I want a proper check. Yep. Okay, same position. Back down. Oh, referee Rich Mitchell's going to restart this one. No loss of points thus far. One point. Oh, no, one there point. is a point taken away. One point. There is going to be a point taken away. I think go. that's fair. And he's not letting Montagnani get back to the feet on this no, one. He's letting Mick Stanton have that takedown that he got as he should. Absolutely. Now, Stanton, you can see how much Stanton is having to hold the hips here to keep Montagni from standing up. It makes it hard for Stanton to advance position or strike, but it does keep him pinned on the ground. So for Montagni, this is great. He's got to keep pushing that head, short little shots, keep trying to stand back up and making Stanton really work. And is Montagnani now perhaps going to be thinking twice about throwing any elbows from this position? Uh, it's definitely going to play into to how he sees it. I mean, he, he can't let it affect him, but at the same time, to know you're a point down within the first, you know, 30 seconds is, is very unusual. Especially with that takedown heavy grinding style we saw from Mick Stanton last time out against a guy who's probably a better wrestler than Montagnani. That's got to be a weighing heavily on the mind of the London fighter now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was just impressed how far out uh, Stanton shot for that single and managed to connect. He's doing a really good job of stripping the posts here. So he goes to the hips, so every time Montagnini posts a hand, he goes to strip it away from him, tries to step over. He's got to watch the triangle here. See Montagnini controlling that wrist. He's going to sneak that leg or that knee through. Stanton's got to be wary. And even these short punches from this top position from Mick Stanton, they're reverberating around the charter hall he really does have a lot of dynamite in those hands big uh, unlicensed amateur boxing background i believe for mick stanton so it's a guy that's used to throwing leather he's managed to flatten montagne out a bit more here see if he can look to pass the guard he's keeping that left hand all the way around the waist real tight waist grip goes to pin the arm as well mick stanton putting plenty of points on the board here Yes, yeah, this is good half guard work from Stanton. He may have to go back to the hips here. There you go. So he connects the hands, pulls the hips out. Just got to stop Montagne from using that cage. And he's going to staying busy. He really is staying busy in doing this. That's partially because Montagne is making him work. But uh, Stanton keeping that head right in the pocket there between the in the shoulder of Alex Montagnani. Yeah, you know, he could probably put a bit more pressure if he managed to get it under the right side of the chin rather than all the way across, but he's doing a really good job of advancing here, trying to step over and pin. You see, forces that big bridge from Montagnani, that urgency and reaction from him, and he's going to get to mount here. Steps into full mount of Stanton, looking to posture up and land some big shots. Yeah, Montagnani's trying to, he's going to go key lock, possibly, looking to wrap up that head. He's got to be careful he doesn't commit his arms too much up top and that way he might get swept. See, so he's keeping his base nice and wide, hips low, knees wide. And that's exactly why he's got to try and ride that bridge out. He's got to be careful here. Oh, Stanton was looking for a take down there, but Mozzioni comes out on top and again warned to pick those shots carefully. Right, but there's the difference. How quickly did Stanton turn in, use the urgency, the explosiveness, the throw on the whizzer. Yeah, he just, he reacted to that position so much quicker than Montagne did to get back to his feet. We're going to connect around the hips. You see how wide the Londoner can spread his legs there in order to widen that base, really make himself as stable as possible. Stanton going uh, 
Didn't try and pick that single leg up and pull it across the body. Yeah, doing a good job of using his physical attributes there is Alex Montagnani. Stanton, though, completely suffocating him at this stage. It is, but it's a lot of work rate from Stanton. Well, pulls down the guard there. That was defence to the throw. 30 seconds left. Already looking to elevate with the butterfly there. Oh, going heel hook. This is where he's going, outside heel hook. Go, ooh, let's see, he's got the knee line, well trapped. Looking to bridge in, can't quite get the grip. He's got to turn Montagne away, force his hands back to the mat. Can't let him come up and put his base on top of him. Oh, big elbow to Montagne. Oh, it's a little bit too late for him. I mean, that's really clearly a round for Mick Stanton. The question is, how much energy did he burn? Final 10 seconds of the round. A big round for Mick Stanton, but perhaps a momentum shift in the last 20 seconds or so, Josh. Yeah, quite possibly. I mean, look, Mick Stanton went for a takedown. He had to bail out to guard and wasn't quite able to sweep that second time. My question is going to be gas tanks at this point. Uh, both guys had to work very hard, but perhaps Mick Stanton had to work a little bit harder. Well, let's take a look now at that earlier incident where Alex Montagnani was to duck to the point. And they're almost vertical elbows right to the back of the head, and you really can't say any better than that, Josh. No, pick, maybe pick maybe your foul. lucky to just have one point deducted there. Yeah, pick, pick your foul at that point. Uh, this was a bit of a scramble that Stanton ended up on the bottom, but look how quickly he's going to turn in, use that right underhook. Again, no, Montagne is really floating that line with the strikes to the back of the head. Let's take a look at this scramble now. Stanton looking for the heel hook here. Yeah, it's a good entry. See how he managed to sit Montagne down. That gave him a genuine bite of the heel there. But then Montagne was able to split the legs, get his weight back on top. And that was what started shifting things for him at the very end of the round. Stanton needed to kick him on the hip, turn him away a bit more. I know over the years the Hammer team have had uh, Dave Bondler training uh, in and around them. And he's a, a big heel hook expert. So. Oh, and that was a big body shot, and that's dropped Stanton. It has. Montagnani smelling blood here. Good recovery from Stanton, though. He's done a really good job to wrestle back there, and we're going to go back to what we saw in the first round, with Stanton connecting the hands around the hips, trying to pull the hips out. He's done a good job of putting the back of Montagnani on the ground here. Again, see, he's stripping that post. We talked about that momentum shift at the end of the first round, and the second couldn't have started any better for Montagnani, but now he's forced back into this defensive position with Stanton on top, yeah, that, piling on the pressure. That tiniest little slip up, isn't it? And, and all of a sudden the complexion completely changes. And Montani's got to work to get back to his feet. He's got the cage to use here, so there are options. But we've seen how good Stanton is at floating this position on top and just securing the hips. It's a horrible position for Lund the Londoner. Stanton steps up into the mount. He's right in front of his own corner team. Brian Crichton, a multiple time Cage Warriors veteran in his corner there as well. Yeah, I really like to see Mick Stanton keep the arms fairly wide. He's got to be ready for the bridges. There we go, there's the bridge and there's the reversal. We see as soon as his arms got committed and tied up, arm bar though from Mick Stanton. Slow through. Looking to get a good bite on the arm here. And he's rolling all the way through, which is, is absolutely how you have to continue this technique when you get stacked. The problem is what's happening with. That right leg of Mick Stanton. It'd probably help if he could put the shin on the back of the head rather than see how he's getting a little bit stretched out, a little bit linear. But if he can get some separation here, it's a horrible position for Montagne, who's going to have to forward roll in defense. See him gripping the inside of his thigh. See, the pressure on Stanton's legs is what disappeared there. As soon as he got flattened, didn't have a bite of the head anymore. We've certainly got a fight on our hands here in the middleweight division. Oh, Granby roll to the leg lock. He's got to turn hard to his left here. Stanton has got to turn hard to his left. He's on a toe hold though. He's got to readjust the grip. He can't let Montani come up on top of him here. See how putting his butt in the way is creating a big frame. It's keeping the Londoner pressed far away from him so he can't stack him on his head. It's going to hopefully allow him to roll through. He's still got an, he's got an entry into an inside Sengaku foot, footlock position here, but it looks like Montagni's going to weigh really heavy and make him pay. Montagnani coming out on top here. Stanton though still attacking the leg. 
Yeah, Montagni's got to go to work here. Stanton's really doing a good job securing that right arm. It's helping protect him because it's slowing Montagni down. It looks like possibly Stanton may have a small cut yeah, above one of his does. eyes. He definitely does. It doesn't look like it's going to be too much of a factor. Ends up on his back here. And let's see what Alex Montagnoni could do. And maybe that cut could be a factor if Montagnoni could open it up a bit here. It, it is starting to leak a little bit now. The question is, can Stanton turns in on the single? Can he pull the hips out? I just love the urgency. It's what you have to do. You can't lay there. You can't languish in side control. You've got to make that decision and go for it. Montagnoni trying to push down on the head of Stanton now and prevent him getting any kind of leverage behind these shots as Stanton tries to drag his man away from the cage. Let me tell you, if Montagny doesn't do something decisive in the next minute, he's going to be three points down going into the last round, which is unrecoverable without stoppage. And the corner is What's the back of his head there, Alex? Calling for short shots as Montagnani is warned yet again for those shots to the back of the head. Yeah, and you can see Montagni's only option here at the moment. He's trying to get a breather as well. I honestly think it's really starting to uh, wear on them both the, the abrasiveness of this fight. There really haven't been too many static periods. Yeah, it's been a pretty torrid pace from bout to bout thus far. Stanton staying busy with these short shots. Montagnani throwing from his back. And he's getting some good short shots in off his back. He really is generating some good force. From, uh, from that position, but it's not going to be enough. Just under half a minute to go in the second round. Five more minutes okay, should they need them. This position. Let's go, get busy. You hear the referee there asking for a little bit more action. Oh, oh Montagnani looking for a triangle there. Yeah, Stanton hit his head. He's given him the omoplata, but he knew it was going to be loose. You see how he immediately re wrestles. And there was a little nod of uh, approval, perhaps, from both gentlemen towards each other there. Yeah, I mean, look, that would have been a good position for Stanton at the end against someone with really, really good jiu-jitsu. But let's take a look at the replays. Let's take a look at this big body kick here to start things off. Ooh, I put Stanton on the seat of his pants. Yeah, I mean, that landed flush, and you see it ripple through the midsection. But he recovered well. He really did. Wrestled in on the double. We see how he turned the corner there, sat Montagne down. This was a reversal from Montani. They see how Stanton's arms get tied up here. So when he bridges, he can't base. You saw Montani pinned his, his left arm. But the entry of the armbar was fantastic. Just didn't quite get the curl on the head that he needed. And just got flammed out a little bit too much. And again, rolling through to attack the legs there was Mick Stanton. And if nothing else, Josh, He's given Alex Montagnani a lot to worry about from a lot of different positions and angles of attack in this contest. Well, that's exactly right, Brad. That's that's what he's doing that most people don't do. A lot of people can be very linear in how they how they defend, how they attack. Mick Stanton's just kind of throwing stuff out there, and it's working for him. Touch of gloves, third and final round underway. Montagnani looking to target the body again early. Oh, gets dropped more start. of a slip there, I think, from Stanton. You do feel like Stanton's only going to need the one takedown. But you can see he's going to struggle to get it here. Those entries are looking a little bit slower and more telegraph, but that's a good one. Yeah, you see he's going to collect that second leg now. Pull both of the knees together or the foot to him. It's going to sit Montagne down again. And for me, the Londoner just not mobile enough on his feet there to avoid these pretty direct takedown attempt from Mick Stanton. Yeah, his, he's not punishing him on the way in enough. He's not hitting him with uppercuts or knees. And, and he's not defensively wrestling adequately enough as well. Mick Stanton's doing a really good job of shutting the hips down and just pitting him against the cage. You see in the back of your screens there our middleweight champion James Webb won the title recently. will be defending it at Cage Warriors 106 at the Apollo next month. But perhaps he's going to have one eye on this contest for a future title challenger. Yeah, it could be interesting. Let's uh, see what Mick Stanton does here. You know, Mick Stanton's not a big middleweight. He, he really isn't. But he's making himself feel like one right now. 
doing such a good job of locking the hips down. Well, it competed for a number of years as a welterweight, moved up to middleweight on uh, less than 24 hours' notice for that title fight against Jonas Bilstein, and uh, you know, kind of liked what he saw at that weight and decided to stay there. Yeah, and he, you know, he's looked great since. So he's let himself get locked up in close guard here, but he's staying busy on the rib cage. What you'll see him do is keep his arms inside and on the body, but without committing too far towards the head. Rich Mitchell asking for a little bit more from Stanton here if he wants to keep this position. What I will say is I wonder if Stanton sussed that there isn't that much of a submission threat coming from Montagnani towards him here. It does look like he's got some triangle entries he's thinking about, but he really hasn't had the confidence to throw anything. Montagnani got to be careful here. Stanton looking for a more dominant position. And surely here, Montagnani has to find a way back to his feet if he's got any hope of finishing this contest. Again, trying to get those hips working is the Londoner. Stanton, though, steps over into full mount. Yeah, let's see what he can do with the strikes here. He's been pretty reserved in mount so far. He hasn't really let it fly yet. He's been maintaining position again though, arms are tied up, so he's got to watch the reversal. The corner team screaming at Stanton to stay on top. They want him to be careful of those sweeps. Yeah, there's the reversal, and this time he rides it out, looks for the arm, and that's going to be loose. And Mantignani's got a minute 45 here, he's got to go to work. Surely Montagnani's going to look to step away here. Oh. You would think disengaging, getting back to the feet would be the way forward, but just accepts that close guard position. He can't afford to lie here on the chest. He's got to, he's got to posture up. He's got to connect himself to the ground, get his head high, and just stop, start stop, throwing stop, down. Stay there, stay there, don't move. Let's see don't what... Move. Oh, they're checking ta loose tape on the glove. Scissors! The referee just calling for some scissors here to... Stay where you are. Remove this loose tape from the glove of Alex Montagnani, one of our cut men in the cage. We, the last thing we want is a bit of loose tape going into someone's eye and causing an injury at this stage in the fight. We're going to get that cage door locked and we're back underway. Yeah, Montagni, I don't he can't afford to play this kind of safe game in here. He's got to get up. There we go. Perfect work. Back to his feet. Bring Stanton back up, and he's just got to let loose here. Montagnani beckons Stanton back to his feet. Looking to dive in with a flying knee there. And that was perhaps a little bit reckless for Montagnani. Yeah, Stanton, all he's got to do is burn time off the clock here. I don't think he's going to be thinking like that. He's going to be trying to get the takedown, but that oh, was a good shot. Heavy hips, see this is what he needed to do from the beginning, heavy hips, makes Stanton really work. Guillotine attempt possibly. Stanton did a good job of hiding his head there from those shots. Yeah, and you know, he's going to be happy churning out here. Montagnani must be incredibly frustrated at this stage. 30 seconds on the clock. I mean, Montagnani's got to get back to that foot. He's got a sort of technical stand-up, push the head away, try and throw some strikes. And as you say, Josh Stanton, more than happy to just shave time off the clock here. Pulls the hips out once more. It's worked for him in the first two rounds. Montagnani closing the guard like that with that long left. That's just acceptance that you're out of this one. Stanton beating a rhythm on the ribs of Montagnani there. He's come out and he's fought a guy with an 11 and 11 3 and 1 record. And he's not just doing it. Mick Stanton really is finding a proper home for himself here in the Cage Warriors middleweight division. You can probably tell from my voice throughout a lot of that, I'm so impressed with the wrestling of Mick Stanton because we just didn't used to see it and he's added it and that was, uh, that was a brilliant performance. He had to, you know, there were times he really had to work. But what I, what, what I love is just how much he threw a lot of random things in there that you really wouldn't expect. And we saw Montagnani briefly Dropping perhaps there, maybe more of a slip.
dance and changing levels again there. As we await our judges, the judges to tally their scorecard. Perhaps academic though with Montagnani losing the point in the first round. But surely taking all three by a margin of 10-9. Montagnani not looking massively pleased with his own performance there. We have our judges' scores, and we'll throw this one to our MC in the cage, Mr. Hal Chaplin, to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, all three judges score this contest 30-26 in favour of your winner by way of unanimous decision in the blue corner, Mick the Hightower.